Hey everybody, it's Sean from the Canadian Breeding Channel. How are you today? And today I thought I'd talk about yeast. Yeast, um, I never had two thoughts about when I first started brewing back 30 years ago, making wine. Uh, and then when I got into home brewing, really got into home brewing a few years ago, doing all grain, I really dove into all of it, all the aspects of home brewing. And I thought it was really interesting, you know, when you do a mash with all grain brewing that it's all about the enzymes, the alpha and the amylase and the beta amylase and the different temperatures and what will, be, you know, become your beer in the end, but not really. So yeah, it will help with the body of the beer and hops when you put them in to the beer, whether it's at the beginning of a boil, the end of the boil, doing a, a whirlpool, a hop stand, that all makes total sense. The thing I didn't realize is yeast is so important. Without yeast, you got no beer. That's the way it is. If you had no yeast, all you would have is a soup of basically work and hops. Hops, work, soup. Yeast is amazing. And if I talk a little bit about what I've learned about yeast, and there's uh, probably 10 years of schooling, I would need to talk about yeast. It is so amazing. I mean, it's a single-celled organism. It's alive. It's a real thing. It, it has DNA, believe it or not, if you don't know that. There is male and female yeast cells. Um, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a single-cell organism. Uh, it's actually, you know, it's a thing that just makes beer. No, yeast has a male and female doesn't have to though because yeast can actually reproduce itself clone itself when it wants to on the basis of how yeast works brewer's yeast i'm not going to get into that. there's many different kinds of yeast but a brewer's yeast uh you have a male and a female but they're not the same as you would think but if you have them in the same area of a liquid and they can get close enough male and females send out a pheromone and if the each one of them is close enough to each other, I'm talking really close, they can actually smell each other and they'll actually touch. And they will reproduce what's called a daughter cell, which takes DNA from both of them and creates another yeast. If there isn't a male and a female in the area or they can't smell each other with their pheromones, let's say there's a female yeast, another male yeast that's farther away, another female yeast, nothing will happen if they're too far apart. But if you have a yeast cell and it doesn't notice that it can smell an opposite attractor, I won't call them sex, but um, they will then start to do what's called budding. And the yeast cell is round and it will start to actually bud out to the side and it will produce an offspring called the daughter cell. You are making beer, um, the yeast themselves have to go through a few different stages to get to that point. Uh, they have to uh, pull in oxygen, they then have to pull in sugars, like simple sugars, and they grow themselves ready to have enough guts, I guess you could call them, internals, to be able to split off. Because a yeast cell can only split off about three or four times before it runs out of guts, and then it dies off. Um, so what happens is they are ready to go to war for the beer, right? Like I would say, going to war for the beer, and they're, they grow as big as they can with you know, as, as much uh, energy inside of the cell that they can have. Um, and this is act after they've gone through uh, absorbing, if there's oxygen in the, uh, in the ward itself, they then go into basically non-aerobic, meaning non-air. They don't need air, air anymore, no oxygen. And they then start to produce buds, daughter cells. The daughter cell comes off and it splits their DNA guts in half it says they're sharing the dna but what they've absorbed to basically give them energy to continue on splits in half and then once they do that the daughter cell grows to full size of the mother cell and can split off and bud again and so will the mother cell so you can split 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 like three or four times but that's you know twice three it's it's exponential you've got like 32 cells or whatever from one math may be off but that's, that's what yeast does, and these are all clones. And it's, it's incredible how this happens. Uh, I can't even go into it because I haven't read enough on it, 
but yeast is just it's just made me so more interested in uh, beer wine uh, all sorts of fermentation things it's it's incredible what yeast does to make beer um, it's it's something that I never thought of until I started getting an all grain brewing and I always go on about all grain brewing you don't have to be an all grain brewer but when I got into that I had to realize to myself what do I have to know about chemistry to all grain brew and when I got into yeast I'm still stuck on it I sit there and think I'm, I'm amazed about yeast and what it does I'm amazed that it's a living organism it's it's so incredible and I mean yeast will do all these things you know in the beer and it, it ferments it and it uh, eats all the sugars and it gives us off alcohol and CO2 so we can also carbonate our beer but when it's finished and it starts to go into starvation mode it goes into mitosis which basically the cell shrinks and puts I don't know how you'd put it but four little tiny yeast cells that aren't born yet into one and goes to sleep and sits at the bottom of your carboy and that's what happens you can either dump that down the drain or you could pour beer on or a wort on top of that and it would make beer again but it's amazing that this organism exists uh, people go out for a walk in the woods and you see uh, mushrooms fungi what do you think that is that's that's yeast that's yeast cousins I mean they're all they're all the same they're all together I didn't even know that yeast forms on the uh, roots of plants and it actually is what allows the plants to absorb the nutrients they actually break down at the molecular level all the nutrients for the plant to absorb without yeast we're not here <laughs> I'm telling you and we're not drinking beer we're not here we're not drinking beer so I, I just thought I'd just do this quick video on yeast I, I may do another one in depth but I'm telling you if you go search the internet on yeast it's amazing it's amazing especially beer yeast because that's what I make is beer and it's uh, it's incredible if you just if you just look go on the internet look it up and uh, just look up yeast I digress uh, like I said I, I thought I'd do a video on this and I'm gonna wrap this up Sean for Canadian Brew Channel and I will be doing another brew in the next week. It's uh, summer's coming up. Spring is here now. And what I think I've decided I'm going to do with brewing is when the temperature's up, down we go with what we ferment at. So anyways, I thought I'd end this video uh, just talking about uh, my next brew. I think I'm going to start to get into uh, a couple more summer beers. And I think then after that, probably in the middle of July, I'm probably going to start doing some autumn beers like pumpkin ales and things like that because it takes a month and a half two months and next thing you know uh, you're into the next time that you're going to be drinking those beers when you're a home brewer if you just if you just like to drink one beer that's all you, all you have to worry about is just brewing but if you want to try and make different styles for the different types of uh, the, uh, the seasons then you got to plan a little bit ahead a couple months behind or ahead sorry with no further ado, this is Sean signing off for Canadian Brew Channel. You guys have a great, great day. Cheers.